got the invitation. That was that's something that our Father has sent to us, an invitation to a rehearsal. And He is blessed that you came. So thank you. Um, sometimes I'm wondering if that parable that Yeshua doesn't talk about, about the Father um, sending out an invitation, and there's lots of people who give good excuses about not coming. I'm wondering if that even could be applied to the feast. So that's for another day. But you have come. And in Leviticus 23, God invited us to show up to every one of his festivals, his holy convocations. And they are rehearsals. And so what we're doing today is we're, we've got uh, Chris and Josiah Mann, and they're going to... Uh, bring us, let us come into their man cave. <laughs> and they're going to share with us some of the things about the Festival of Shavuot, but not just the Festival of Shavuot, all of them a little bit. So, and then at the end, we are going to uh, do what we call a kiddush. And that will be when the hoop is set up and there'll be a table with Rabbi and some of the elders. And we invite you to come up and get uh, your bread and your wine. Now, in the ancient wedding customs, whenever a, a man was in pursuit of a, of a bride, he sometimes they didn't even know each other. Um, but he would go to the house and he would give his, and I'm, I'm giving you kind of this, some of the script today, giving, you, giving her a ketubah. And if she agrees, then she would drink the cup. And so we're asking you today, today we are recommitting ourselves to the Lord. Once again, it's a rehearsal. And so we want to uh, be sure and drink that cup. Because that cup tells the Lord, yes, yes, I am yours. Um, I think that's probably uh, one of the, the we're going to finish up here, but one of the things today is, is that we want to make for sure that when we leave this day, we've received something from the Lord. And with a Shavuot, because it's the giving of the, of the Torah and the giving of the Holy Spirit, the two things that we want to come away from today is a deeper revelation of the Word of God and a fresh infilling. Because we've got the fall festivals that, that's a ways off. And we need to have that fresh and filling to be able to make it. Remember, it is the same power. The Ruach HaKodesh is the same power that raised Messiah from the grave and that dwells in us. And he wants us to walk and to live in that resurrection power. Well, Josiah, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Tonight at sundown begins Shavuot. Finally, it seems like it has been forever with all the waiting and counting and more waiting and more, more counting and more waiting. <laughs> <laughs> well, all things from the Lord are worth waiting for, but it's not just about waiting. It's about preparing for what the Lord has in store for us. It seems like the Jewish people are always preparing for something. Yes, but it's a way that Adonai keeps us on track and our toes for what he is doing. The feast days are a guidepost, giving us a picture of the plan and the work of Messiah. A lot of people think that the feasts are just for Jews. Yeah, I know. They are the Lord's feasts. Did you know that there is a commandment that we are not only to keep the feasts, but to proclaim them? I remember seeing that in Parashat Amor when we read it a few weeks back. It was in Leviticus 23, wasn't it? It was. Isn't it awesome how the Parashat reading of Amor and even Bahar the week after are read almost halfway through the counting of the Omer? It is a gentle reminder from the Lord to keep counting and keep us on the path of what we're supposed to do. Yeah, to count and wait. So why are the feasts so important to the Lord? As I said before, the feasts tell us about the plan and the work of the Messiah. Okay, let's take a crash course about the feast before we go any further. There are eight feasts of the Lord. These are listed in Leviticus 23, as you said. We have a weekly feast, the Sabbath, and we have seven annual feasts. Pesach, Feast of Unleavened Bread, and Feast of First Fruits. These feasts were celebrated just a little over a month ago. They are the spring feasts. 
The fall feasts are Yom Teruah, which many refer to as Rosh Hashanah. Then there is Yom Kippur, and finally Sukkot. So what can you tell me about these feasts? Yeshua uh, has fulfilled all of the three spring feasts, but the three fall feasts are yet to be fulfilled. That's right. Now go deeper. How do you think the Feast of the Lord tell us about the work of the Messiah? Pesach is about redemption. The Feast of Unleavened Bread could be about sanctification. And first fruits or Bikarim is about Yeshua being the first fruit, and we are his first fruit. That's what it says in Romans 8.29. Go on. Yom Teruah is about preparing for Yeshua's return. Yom Kippur is about the atonement, and Sukkot is about the wedding supper of the Lamb. And what about the weekly feast of Shabbat? That teaches, that teaches us to rest in the Lord, and that one day we will enter into the internal rest. But wait a minute, we only talked about six annual feasts. I thought there were seven. What am I missing? The Feast of Shavuot, the fourth feast, it's the middle or the early summer feast. Oh yeah, the reason we started this conversation in the first place. All right, Shavuot, like a diamond, has many facets. It's known primarily by the church as Pentecost, which means 50. And it is also known as the Feast of Weeks because we count for seven weeks plus one day. The Lord commands us in Leviticus 23 to count the days. We count for 49 days, or in other words, we prepare for the 49 days and then celebrate Shavuot on one day. So it's a total of 50 days to be exact. The Lord wants us, actually commanded us, to count the days between Pesach or Passover or Shavuot. Why, you ask? Why? Well, I'm not sure, but it appears that the Lord wants us to prepare for this event. If you don't know when the day is, how can we be prepared for it? It's kind of like a girl who is pre preparing for her wedding day, or perhaps a senior in high school or college. They want to be ready. As their special day draws near, they begin to count down to the day. The event that they have been waiting for will change their lives, for they are walking through a door to something new and different. They are closing one door and opening another. Unlike the bride counting down to her wedding day, we are counting up to a big event. It is a picture of walking up, or perhaps arising to, the occasion. It is taught by some sages that the Bene Israel was at a spiritual low when he sent Moshe as their deliverer. Each step they took, and each day that passed, they came further and further from Egypt, which had held them in slavery. Breaking off their shackles and walking more and more in their freedom, they became closer and closer to their promised land. That reminds me of what Yeshua did. That's exactly right. So let's do this. I will say something about the first Pesach, and you tell me how Yeshua fulfilled it, okay? The father of the household applies the blood of the lamb to the doorposts. Just as the slaughtered lamb in Egypt protected B'nai Israel from physical death, Yeshua's blood protects us from spiritual death by giving us eternal life. If we accept Yeshua as our Savior, His blood is applied to the doorposts of our hearts. Okay, how about this one? Moshe holds up the staff and the Red Sea parts, and people travel to the other side on dry ground. That reminds me of Yeshua breaking the chains and setting the captives free. Yeshua opens up the prison doors with the keys of the kingdom. Your example is shown the physical deliverance, mine is shown the spiritual deliverance. Very good. The path that Adonai led B'nai Israel on those 50 days after leaving Egypt was the same path Yeshua took his disciples and other followers on from the time of his death to the day of Shabbat in Jerusalem in 33 Common Era. These are the ancient paths of our ancestors. The events we talked about were the beginning of their journey to Shabbat. Adonai revealed as protector, provider, healer, and redeemer. And Yeshua came to, the, came to Tabernacle with us. He is the good news, the Lion of Judah, and the Lamb of God. Amen. Yes, his name is great.
what is the significance of Shavuot? It is the day that the Torah was given to B'nai Yisrael. 1,500 years later on, the anniversary of the giving of the Torah, the Ruach HaKodesh was given in Acts 2. You might say that the giving of the Ruach HaKodesh was an anniversary present to the Jewish people and for us today for being faithful to keep Shavuot, as well as the other feasts that the Lord gave to them and to us. Even though we are not there, we, are, we still are recipients of what was given to the B'nai Yisrael at Mount Sinai. Let's put on our sandals and stand with them. God himself descended on the mountain. Speaking to each one of us, he declared, I am God, your God, and then presented us with the Torah to keep and cherish. It was a moment of love and commitment. Indeed, the day God gave us the Torah is called our wedding day. These two events, the giving of the Torah and the giving of the Ruach Kodesh, changed history. Therefore, with the same intensity and faithfulness we give in counting the Omer is the same intensity and fullness that we will receive a fresh infilling of the Ruach HaKodesh. Not only should we look forward to receive a fresh infilling of the Spirit, but a greater revelation of God's Word. Just like the blood of the Lamb in Egypt at Pesach is comparable to the blood of Yeshua, the Lamb of God and the captives being set free are similar comparisons for Shavuot. As I mentioned before, these events are two of the most important moments in the history of time. At Shavuot, the Ruach Kodesh was given 1,500 years to the day after the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. The Ruach Kodesh is our seal and guarantee. So you're saying that the gift of the Ruach Kodesh was given on the same day? the anniversary of when the Lord first gave the Torah at Mount Sinai? Yes, the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh at the Temple in Jerusalem in the days just following Yeshua's ascension parallels the giving of Torah at Mount Sinai in the day of Moshe. Let's read the accounts. Let me start with Exodus 19.16. It says, It came to pass on the third day in the morning there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the shofar was very loud, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. It goes on to say in verse 18 that Mount Sinai was completely covered in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and that the whole mountain quaked greatly. Wow. Look at verse 19. It says a blast of shofar sounded long and became louder and louder. Isn't that amazing? Now you read it in the Brit Hadashah. Acts 2.1 says, And the day of the festival Shavuot had come. They were all with one mind in one place. In verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Wow, it's because they waited and counted and waited some more. Yes, and some believe that we celebrate any of the feasts of the Lord found in Leviticus 23, that the Lord will replicate the emotion and intensity of the spiritual significance of those feasts as when they were first given. For instance, at Pesach, we should experience a new and deeper awareness of redemption. As when we celebrate unleavened bread, we should experience a new and deeper awareness of removing the leaven or sin from our lives. Okay, you're saying we should experience the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh in a greater way each year just by waiting and counting and waiting some more? Right. Shavuot is an opportunity to see the Torah with new eyes and to marvel and awe at the Almighty's wisdom and generosity. We are praying for a deeper revelation of the Word and for a fresh outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh. And let us keep this in mind. Shavuot is a mini Yovel, or year of Jubilee. There's a special dispensation of release that we need to expect. It was a day Hashem breathed new life upon the people, through the Ruach HaKodesh. So, we need to have a great expectation that Shavuot will be a day of great, of great deliverance and a day of liberation for us. It would be good for us to do what the Word of God says. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Right. There is a reaction to every action. I think we should stop right now and ask for a fresh infilling, don't you?
At this time, the bride might even sing from the mountaintop words found in the Song of Solomon, Ani le dodi le dodi li. I know what that means. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. And something interesting. In the order of Hebrew scriptures, the book of Ruth follows the Song of Solomon. <laughs>
the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh and his promise to send our bridegroom. And just as the bride waited for the return of her bridegroom, we wait too. There is a wedding theme throughout the scriptures, and each of the feasts alludes to this theme as well. A little bit ago, you mentioned Ruth. Why is the book of Ruth read at Shavuot? It is believed by the sages that when Ruth approached Boaz on the threshing floor, that it was the season of Shavuot. Also, Boaz was the Goel, or kinsman redeemer. Oh, I know what a Goel is. It's someone who, re who redeems or restores property that a family member has lost due to, due to unfortunate circumstances. Right. He restores hope in the future for others. That is what Boaz did, not only for Ruth, but especially Naomi. He restored and preserved the name of Naomi's husband and sons so it could continue. Do you know who came through the, that lineage? King David was Ruth's great-grandson, and then, of course, Yeshua came from their lineage as well. So without Boaz and Ruth, we would not have the Messiah. But Ruth was a Gentile. Yes, but Ruth was grafted into Israel. Yeshua showed us how much he loved us, Jew and Gentile, by laying his life down for us. We, too, can show him how much we love him by laying our lives down at his feet.
that all through history, men and women have waited and anticipated the promise, the promise that of the Messiah from the beginning of time. It is through their faithfulness and persistence that we are standing here today, and just maybe we will be the generation to actually see the fulfillment of the promise, our Messiah's return, and to celebrate the wedding supper of the Lamb. We celebrate the feast, but they are also rehearsals until Yeshua comes, and then we will celebrate in fullness with Him. So today is a time to renew our commitment to the Lord, to go deeper and climb higher, and it's my responsibility to pass these things down to you and to your sisters, and to teach you to give all of yourselves to the Lord, and when you do, He will give you all of Him. Now is the time to desire more of Him. This Shabbat, the Ruach HaKodesh, is wooing and drawing us into our bridegroom's embrace and bringing us deeper into His presence. It is our privilege to respond to His invitation. This is the day to receive a deeper revelation of His Word and a fresh outpouring of His Spirit. We must keep our ears open to hear the sound of the shofar bidding us to come. And we must listen for the wooing of the Spirit and join the multitude at the wedding supper and sing praises to the Lord for His love his goodness, and his mercy, and his greatness. May our voices rise in unity to say to him, we want more of you.
Well, we've come to the uh, intimate part of partaking of the Lord's Supper together as the Bride of Messiah. And I didn't receive any instruction on how we would do this, so I'm just going to invite you to come down as the Spirit is leading you, and we will hand you the elements. And please wait and take the elements back to your seat, and then we'll all partake together after we say the blessings. So at this time, just begin to come down. As a matter of fact, let's all stand.
And as we heard during the presentation, that there was a cup of wine that was shared between the bridegroom and the bride. An act of betrothal and also an act of sealing the covenant was the giving of a ring. And Hashem has sealed the covenant with us through the giving of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, who has sealed us unto the day of redemption. Hallelujah. When Yeshua comes back for us. Let's remember also that Yeshua said, I will not drink this fruit of the vine again until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's all chant the blessing. Baruch